Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the two against the Overlords campaign. It has been a while since I could play. Uh, real life really came in the way. But today we're going to do Operation Magic Jester. I or we want the Colonel Assault Infantry there just to get a prime team together. And we are going to do that with a B team. I wanted to give everybody who still needs more experience a chance to get that. Hogbite is not going to be with his teammate. Spectre will stay at home because they are already a colonel. Then we got Zeus and Redline, Black Magic, Wolfhound, and Doom. So a bit of a different team this time. Also seeing more of the skirmisher might be an interesting way of playing that. So it's a protect the device and you all know what that means. It's going to be fun, it's going to be fast, it's going to be furious and it is going to be wild. So let's dive into it. Here we go. All right, landed. Let's take a good look here. Are you kidding me? Alright, we might lose this entire mission just because we are like furthest away from where someone could potentially land. Holy macaroni. Good, I'm going to use all of the speed up tools at my disposal just to get there. High ground is helpful, but we're so far away. Might as well move all the way to there. Getting it done. Rushing in. <laughs> move, move, move. Gotta hate uh, the classical design. And I should have also brought more of the special armor now in hindsight. Uh, we don't have the Icarus suit with us. That would have made that whole thing a bit easier. Luckily, we got a couple of grappling hooks. Not perfect, but it is at least getting us uh, there. Ooh. Did we do did we have a mod that prevents the enemies from attacking? No. Uh, something is going on here. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but typically you don't see Guide my hand. Enemies not attacking. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Well, Let's say thank you for being so kind. Rolling out. We're moving closer to the actual to the actual protect the device part. This here will be an important step for us. Let's just move up. Will do. Let's check if this triggers anything. No, but we know there are a few enemies right there. There's a mech somewhere around and I don't know where it is at the moment, the so is clear. carefully move into here. There we go. Six points of damage could have been worse. Uh, that's 44 still left over. Need to deal with these guys. Uh, skirmisher might. 
might have uh, the... Okay, well, the skirmisher might have lightning reflexes. Not sure, but I think we just killed him. We moved there, hit him, and he does not have lightning reflexes, so... That should trigger Bladestorm there, just in a second. I take a new approach. Nope. Well, no Bladestorm. No Bladestorm. Uh, not optimal. We could bring this one down and solidly kill. You know what, let's do that. Better start running. Thanks to Salvo. This is not even going to end our turn. Very good. One down here. Fabulous. Miss, unfortunate. Okay, next up, target uh, cover removal. Cover removal and damage that will let him drop through the floor as well. The Raptor Commando, that is. I said like extra damage. Moves up. I don't want to move too close because we know there is another pack here. Taking this guy out into sustenance. Okay. Come on, stay with me. Heading over teamwork. To a missed shot uh, that is not great but we could work with it I think what we should do is do a hundred percent kill which this here will do even if we miss again like we did and yeah, listen, we're just going to overwatch Raptor. As tactical analysis, moves back, and we're shooting him right into the back. 38 hit points remain. There's a pack over here as well. Gotta be a bit careful with that. Could 
could move to here, grapple over and have the high ground. I think that's the play. Without being set up, that means we will not get death from above here, but we still get a kill. And moving up even further, that uh, means tactical uh, teamwork over there. We do not yet have uh, the the ability to shift actions. Otherwise, so that's two down. If we run in, that would be a problem. So we're not going to do that. Instead. Instead, I'm suggesting we're going over here, maybe using a Mimic Beacon if needed. We could pull the Spectre out. I think that's the play. Good. Let's get them. Great. I, yeah, I figured uh, the grenade option would be too far away for us. On your order. They do have lightning reflexes, so there's really no point in readying against them. Heavy cover makes it a bit difficult to really get to them. This you could theoretically stun them. You know what? I'll just do it. Okay, we're going to see the stupid shadow melt ability come in. Might as well move in closer. Never mind. We don't. Alright, bracing, killing that spectre, that resets our attack, which is great. Move up. I'm coming for you. Easy now, soldier. Heal up doom, and we don't have time pressure, we still have 38 hit points on the clock. Not bad. Not bad. Moves to here. Moves to here. Heading out. Go, go, go. And we could move over here, but it's a bit dangerous. 
Hmm. Don't want to pull anything. I must reload. It is under my watch. Scanning. Scanning. Okay, let's get those. Let's get those two archons in. Nothing. Interesting. We're closing on the objective. <laughs> of course. But I do have a plan B. I was anticipating that. Oh, quite yet. It's Comet Presence. And do we have someone with lightning reflexes? Potentially not. But we got the second best, which is stay completely in cover. And teach these guys here a lesson. Yep, we now got Battle Frenzy. Hawkbite just moves slightly back. Alright, of course, pulls another pack. Because it wouldn't be XCOM if that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Love it. Elite Assault. Okay. Good. You guys play with that. In the meantime, we're doing like a big fat overwatch here in case someone comes in. That also means we will have two overwatch shots. And we're preparing this guy to be taken out. Overwatch here. Alright, everybody has tactical analysis. That's a problem. Stupid Andromedon Prime. A bit above the maximum. Moving up here, even if that exposes us to the other side, but I'm confident in what we're going to do. Up. 
Rockpile very much just stays there for now. All right, and this here should cause a chain reaction and apparently the game crashed. Wonderful. Good, attempt number two. Let's try this again. Replay the exact same turns. Here we go. to freeze the Andromedon or hand over an action which we currently cannot do. Andromedon primes are a bit of a pain in the rear. Their reaction shots are actually problematic. So what I will say is we're going over here don't have frostbite ready well we have it ready but it's not close enough Lifting off. all right that solves a huge problem for us towards getting these guys down as well almost uh, there I'm on it. this guy is already dead due to blade storm so we just need to get the sentinel down which we just successfully did fantastic ground and a kill we're going to place this over here a clue why he is missing but okay moves up adrenaline rush into healing and then we can open the door very good it might even give us a line of sight. No, it does not, but that's okay. That's okay, baby. Don't you worry. Hogbite goes in deep. Behind enemy lines. And finally got a sweet, sweet promotion. Sharpshooter takes damage, but is now in level range. And let's deal with the Andromedon in a second. The Andromedon currently, to my knowledge, is not really receiving a lot of 
cover. No, it's still having the full cover. Well, too bad. I thought uh, Frozen would reduce the cover, but I was wrong. Superior Expanded Magazine and Superior Speed, that's good loot, that's fantastic loot. We can draw ourselves there and that will allow us to kill plus. We now have Rip Jack, which is Blade Storm for the poor. And that should be a kill because Ripjack will finish it off. He now gets an action. The suit still has the stupid ability to get extra actions, but Ripjack uh, prevented that from happening. Sometimes you just got to abuse the mechanics in your favor. Okay, interesting. Thumbs up. Good job, everyone. Hogbite finally made it. According to Advent officials, recent attacks by dissident elements operating outside of the city centers have done little to slow the Good. progress of... Good. The team's, uh, team becomes stronger and stronger, and I really like that. Plus, we now got a new uh, assault. This is certainly a quick study. Hogbite, what do we do? Um, I like Ghost, I like uh, Ionic Storm, uh, and therefore we're just going to do both. Because we can. Because we can. Uh, yeah, I think we're keeping the rest. I think we're continuing with opportunists here. Flank targets. Ah, uh, well, weapon specialist isn't bad either. Let's stick with that. And he has 16 AP. All three of these are actually good abilities. But I think we're just going to take that. Oh wow, and we got another promotion. Holy macaroni, that was a good mission. Suppression, now 33% uh, to grace. I like that. Weapon hot was good as well. And lower dodge chance. This guy here really had... Light them up, single target. Dedicated armor slots. You know, I mean, Withering Barrage plus uh, Danger Zone isn't bad either, but I think we're sticking with on target for, uh, for Wolfhound. What a great mission. Plus we got Colonel Lee, he, G, Lee, G. We just call her Brick, and what do we want to do with her? Hmm, she got Evasive, which is great, extra Blast Petting, super strong, and can throw. That's not bad, and she also got everything all the way up to here, and she's gifted. Hmm. That's not much more that you can ask for. She's a really, really good soldier. So... With a katana in play, I think the the, um, the melee route isn't bad. Uh, the chance to hit isn't necessary with the katana. So 
that extra zone control if you want a shotgun build is good. Grenade throw plus this here <laughs> could actually make her a really good grenade thrower. Um, you know what? We're going to go with uh, control zone. That's good. The second one is the break uh, is basically where you can get extra movement, either from media attacking, which I think is fantastic, or from the breaching maneuver where you can get a partial refund when you attack a flank one, which isn't bad either. It's kind of both are like implacable, but a bit uh, lighter. I think though that the breakthrough, turn ending melee attack, that is important because it makes her a tiny Templar. She can always move afterwards. Here for me, the bonus to dodge in itself is great, but the counter attack with the melee weapon is just absolutely fantastic because you can tank much more. I like lightning reflexes as well, I should say, and for 15 points it's a steal. So I might even think about just going lightning reflexes and have the best of both worlds. It just It's a no-brainer to do that. So here it becomes a bit more interesting, right? Uh, this here gives you a non-movement action after killing with a melee attack, or you get a non-movement action after killing a stunned or disoriented target, which needs a combo to set it up. I think with a katana, we can actually go this here and feel really good about it. Extra blast padding isn't bad either. I like untouchable. Uh, so that's again kind of a no-brainer, but it comes with zone uh, defense, which uh, is a nice way of um, of defending yourself. It's not really blade storm, but it is wider than that, so that's really really good. We are going to go with untouchable, uh, but zone defense is very close to my heart. I really like it. That. Um, Extra evasive here isn't bad either because you get a lot of movement up to 10 fields, so it synergizes very well. Or after entering Overwatch, gain automatic reaction shots against any enemy that moves or attacks within. So, this is essentially you could kill someone and slightly move into a position and stay there with uh, a big fat Overwatch cone. That's not bad. Uh, you get that on top of uh, the normal overwatch. Extra damage in melee, extra critical hit chance is good. So we're going the melee route is what I decided. Now it's just a matter of what else could we could we use with her. And I think the zone defense is great. I like that. The extra ability for sh shotgunning someone who is killed or stunned isn't bad either. Uh, mind you, you can trigger both, uh, so that's a lot of extra actions that you could get out of it. So I'm sort of debating with myself if I want that, because you can do this, and then um, uh, you can run up, kill someone, move somewhere, and then shoot, get another action, and then shoot again. So it's a lot that you can get out of it. Alternatively, uh, just a couple of hit points aren't bad either. Evasion generally is good as well, and the uh, mm, QCB zone is great. But I think we're going for sweep and clear just because action economy is king. I think you're going to be a huge addition to the team. Massive. And if we play her right, that is she's going to be such a monster. Superior speed, not a bad uh, choice for a melee focused character. Wow. She would be good. Holy. And we got a zapper as well. If the two of them get along together, lights out. Lights out. Do we have a covert action that forms a new bond? Promotion. <laughs> we don't. Uh, 
Too bad, but we got a six days promotion and my question is who needs that? Funnily enough, you cannot promote a colonel, so duh. Jokes on you. Mm -hmm. I would love to get uh, the medic here promoted. Black magic. Tapcat's input into this was basically make sure that uh, we're promoting enough people. And I agree with his assessment here. I want to make sure that uh, we have a nice little uh, queue of high level soldiers lined up. I'll order my people to get underway immediately. Okay, so let's see what the strategy layer is uh, doing. Soldier bond training available. Very good. We already have that. Uh, we're also removing negative traits, so all of that is good. Gosh, it has been a while. So, we got intel, we got uh, contact costs, we got assorted loot. Hmm. Do we even have anything left over? No, the world seems to be ours. Tja. That isn't really that much. I mean, we could get intel. Tapcat could do the codex brain coordinates. How's our team uh, looking like? A lot of tired people, so let's give them a break and then I'll hand it over to him. When we actually do have a few more people available. Good, so um, how about we're gaining just normal intel because you never know what's going to happen Gaining intel is a no regret move because you get it immediately and on average you get as much uh, mm, as with, uh, uh, with the bigger scans, just in smaller increments and faster. Presumably. Getting that chrysalid uh, down, that's a good idea. Getting nope, can't increase any bond because apparently either of these guys is not available at the moment. Okay, how's the shadow chamber doing? We built the shadow chamber. We should be able to complete a more thorough analysis of the alien artifacts and data we've been recovering. Good, we're starting with that. Nice, another blaster launcher. That is good. That is fantastic. Good, we got all negative traits removed. I know that Hogbite has a negative trait and a couple of others do as well. So we gotta look out when they are back in action. As mentioned, we're seeing a lot of tired shaken. Hogbite in, uh, himself is lightly wounded. But yeah, the team needs a break at the moment. There you go. Bond increase. Fantastic. Commander, the aliens continue to make progress on the Avatar project. If we're going to slow them down, we'll need to move fast. Got an urgent communication coming defeated. in. You have made defeated. And defeated. Alien Cypher would uh, be a problem, so we don't want that to happen. Well, I tell you what, I don't think that there is actually anything hardly that we that we should change here. Maybe we, since we have enough contacts, we change that. That will give us instant heavy weapons. We okay. And Avengers that's a thousand supplies.
Good, Hogbite is back from his wounds. Might as well remove the negative traits. And in Proving Grounds, Experimental Powered Weapon. Remove that, thank you. Uh, that's immediate and immediate and we got the shredstorm cannon so I think we're Gucci on that one still got six cores do we have anything in the GTS to upgrade yes that and tech specialist and parkour because why not we have enough money anyways engineering rage armor we can definitely benefit from having that so a little bit of valerium wouldn't be bad don't need that don't need that don't need that Gauntlet upgrade, Mark II. I think that's for the skirmisher as well. I should see if any of this. I'm glad to see our joint effort paid off. Like Very good. So we just got Heather promoted. Word is we've got a new trick or two available. Before we're going any further, first of all, let's promote her. And we got attempt a uh, more difficult hack that uh, can self discrant or gain permanent control for the rest of the mission. That's a great one. I like it. Uh, reduce all of uh, the protocols or gain the ability to equip a heavy weapon regardless of the armor worn. Equipped heavy weapons gain plus one charge and but deal less 30% uh, less damage. I think that is fantastic we're going to use that because that would mean in her personal loadout that she now has a heavy weapon slot and in that heavy weapon slot you can put something like a blaster launcher and that means she now has two blaster launchers for a mission Not bad, not bad at all. I think Hogbite, uh, no, Tapcat, not Hogbite. Uh, Tapcat used her together with the Reaper, so that's not a bad setup to begin with. Oh, Commander, before I forget. Ring facility is currently idle. If we have the soldiers to spare, it's alright. Don't uh, sweat your pants, resistance. my dude. Out of progress, don't really need that, although 9 dodge is a nice a little gimmick. Uh, that is completely useless. Promotion and contract isn't bad. Aim isn't bad. Yeah, we got a lot of promotions the game realizes we need further soldiers avatar progress tell you what we should potentially go for another promotion seven days seven days All right, who deserves a promotion? I think good old uh, Implacable could use one. XQ6 is still out of commission for a few days. So let's just give him the promotion. Uh, didn't we? 
yeah, we already are doing something in the training center. I was like, aren't we improving a bond already? Based on the latest findings. Work is well underway, Commander. Listen, we're now at a point where we need to do those extra missions. And Tapcat has prime team available. If he feels like it, he can also use kind of secondary team. There is nothing wrong with it. If I'm just looking at kind of the A team, right? So if I was to go into the last mission, I would uh, potentially pick Marksman Templar. That's a no-brainer from my end. If we can somehow get the Assault Infantry and the Zapper to working together, then that would that would easily uh, fill the two slots uh, that then Marine and Field Medic uh, would um, would conclude. So I would actually take those six. I'm not sure how fast. Tapcat is uh, to get uh, Grease and Ross with us on the last mission. I always loved Reapers in normal missions. On the last mission they are typically not that great, simply because there are no exploding cars for starters and then secondly their average damage output isn't on par with the other classes, so really they bring less to the table than the others when push, it, uh, push comes to shove. But it by no means uh, they are a bad class. They are actually still good. All right, so that's it from my end. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, feel free to leave a like and a comment down below. And uh, see you in the next episode. Bye-bye, guys. Uh, back over to you, Tapcat.